As the phoenix slow falls on the throne of Hades, he perches directly in front of the god of death. Hades stands in awe of his brother's creation, and in a low voice, filled with awe, he says, Magnificent. Hades tries to touch the bird, but as his hand comes within reach, it starts to regain life. Hades pulls away and screams, Horrid, wretched beast, there is no fouler thing than to be cursed with life. Hades calls his dog Cerberus, which is a beast that is neither alive nor dead and has no soul. Hades orders Cerberus to take the phoenix and lock it away forever in Tartarus. The phoenix spent his time in, in Tartarus listening to the thoughts of lost souls. He was unable to decipher his own thoughts from theirs. As time goes on, the phoenix no longer has bird form. Cerberus no longer recognizes the phoenix as a threat and decreases his guard on the phoenix's cage. In the form of a glimmer of light, the phoenix is no longer bound and phases in and out of the areas of the underworld. One day a large number of souls start coming through the gates of the underworld. The souls coming are not like the regular souls, but are souls of unrest and sadness. The soul of a mother calls out for her family. To the mother, the underworld is very dark. She wanders aimlessly in the underworld for days. The phoenix hears the mother's call, but now only exists a small glimmer of light. Still, the mother is drawn to the light. After days of deep depression, she finally reaches the phoenix. What are you? the mother asks. A, a couple seconds of silence pass as the phoenix cannot make a sound. You are very bright in this dark place, says the mother. I am very afraid of the dark, and I have seen your light. What am I to do? As the woman speaks, the phoenix begins to grow a little brighter. Am I dead? the woman asks the light. The woman falls to her knees and starts to cry. The light, sensing the sadness, is moved by the emotion from the woman and reverberates with the rhythm. The woman jumps with astonishment. The light grows until it engulfs the woman and the immediate surrounding area. The woman engulfed in the light appears alive. The woman slowly realizes that she has been reborn and regains her humanity and memories. Shuddering, the woman screams, Where am I? My family? My life? Who are you? What is this? The woman drops to her knees again and yells, my family, are they here? Are they all dead? Movement can be heard from the surrounding area as the attraction from light is overwhelming to the beasts of the underworld. A red glowing egg appears in the middle of the light sphere. The woman approaches the egg, but the heat emanating from the egg is so intense that it halts her advance. The woman feeling the power emanating from the egg starts to pray for her family. Please let this omen become the salvation for my people. The woman with sweat pouring from all her body forces herself to reach through the heat and touch the egg. Upon touching the egg, the woman starts to disintegrate. With one last breath, cries out with the thoughts and sounds of her life engulfing the egg. The egg starts to crack and a small bird of fiery white emerges. The bird fed from the emotion of the mother begins to mature and grow till it is fully aware of itself and its surroundings. The phoenix's light grows and encompasses half the underworld. Hades, noticing the event, watches in disgust and hatred for this vile spectacle. Cerberus can only stand back and growl, for the power is overwhelming. Beings all over the underworld, touched by the light, are regaining their life forms. Life regained by these beings takes form, and the beasts that control the underworld are fleeing from the light so they can remain dead. The divine light illuminates the underworld, like a dome that is soon to be under siege. Crowds of beings gather together. A man close to the middle of the light runs outward to find a man on the edge of the light stopped with a look of great fear in his eyes. What's wrong, says the man. A few moments pass and the fearful man utters the word, Demons. The fearful man starts yelling, Demons! And starts running towards the center of the light. The beings on the very rim of the light dome see impending doom as demons wait for the light to pass. A man with full clothing and a hammer walks into the crowd. We are in the underworld, he exclaims. What do you mean, underworld? A woman from the crowd replies. There are demons all around us, and we have very little time. The man with the hammer persuades. What should we do, the crowds ask. A large shockwave is felt, and the crowd turns to see a beam of light, and a large bird-like creature tearing a hole in the roof of the underworld. The man with the hammer yells, Run! The man with the hammer starts running and yells out, we must reach the boatman. He's our only option. The crowd of beings start to follow the man with the hammer. 
One being looks behind and witnesses the hole in the underworld start closing, and the light starts to dissipate. Keep moving, yells the man with the hammer. The beings break through the barrier of the light dome, and the light from the dome gets dimmer and dimmer. As soon as the beings are free of the dome's protection, demons begin swarming the group. Only the sound of screaming can be heard because nothing can be seen. The man with the hammer valiantly kills many demons and turns to yell, Follow my voice! We are close to the docks! The beings that heard this voice start running in the direction of the voice. Unfortunately, demons were also drawn to the voice, and a chase to the boatman ensues. The man with the hammer yells, I found the dock, and hurls a coin from his pocket into the water when still running towards the dock. Demons encroach upon the water's shore. The man with the hammer turns to face the last demon that will halt their advancement. The demon jumps on a girl, and the man smashes the demon with the hammer, seemingly destroying the demon on impact. More demons were approaching, so the man, in one fluid motion, threw the girl and jumped on the boat. The few survivors then await their fate at the hands of the boatman.